if you are not good in drawing, that actually doesn't mean anything. You can still be great at Illustrator because there's so many technical things that if you learn and you apply, you can really quickly develop a great skill. The actual most difficult thing, if you are not good at hand drawing, is to come up with an idea. And that's what you see here on my screen. This is, this is a concept of a character, a fisherman, which is probably, at the moment, doesn't look that great, but there is the potential for it to look great. And that's because it already has a character, a personality. It's, it's, um, it's like a caricature of a character, but once you start adding colors, which is still not the final stage, but already starts to look like, oh yeah, that's, that's starting to look great. But the transition from here to here is actually very easy to learn. You have to know a little bit about color theory, how to combine colors together, which I will also talk about a bit in a bit, but it's actually a very systematic thing. So the most important thing is to be able to come up with something like that. But to be honest, in the beginning, every illustrator starts with copying. Everyone who worked at Disney, I met several people, illustrators working at Disney, they all started with copying. You have to copy others to be able to learn or study. Just simply uh, look at things, objects, and start, try to draw them. But once you have to get to the second stage, I said you're still not ready, there is still the detailing part, which can add, an, again, another whole depth to the illustration. And detailing means adding shadows and highlights, as you can see, that's what's being added here, and also the textures and little details, which makes the whole, anime, uh, the whole illustration uh, more interesting to look at and engaging. And here's another quick example, just, just to understand what I'm talking about. When you have a simple object like this, uh, scene here that we have a couple of objects together. This already looks quite nice. It could be in a cartoon or something like that, but very important what colors being used. If I change the colors around, that could be a different style, but it doesn't look as nice. It's, you can feel like things are out of place. And that's not because these are colors are all very similar, but they are in harmony. They are selected accordingly to whatever mood needed to be uh, achieved. But that's again still not the final illustration. This would be a basic we call flat colors or base colors. And on top of this, you would start to add the details. And now I, let me just zoom a little bit closer. So when I turn this on and off, you see what do I add here? I add the shadows, right? So cast shadows are very important because they define depth. That's what makes things look more three-dimensional. So without that, you don't really feel like there is uh, dimensions or depth to the pillow, for example. But once you have the shadows, immediately makes it like an object that you, you would be able to pick up and hold. But shadows are not enough. You also need highlights. See the difference again when I turn on the highlights, immediately it starts to come alive. And all those little highlights here as well, all around the edges, we call uh, rim lights, are also very effective and important to make it more tangible, the whole thing. But that's still not all, because you can also add um, ambient light. So once you have the shadows and highlights all in place, you can still add ambient light, which again adds a whole another dimension to the scene. And that's where the cast shadows appear. You can see all around. And then if I want to make the ambient light even more effective, I could even use a gradient in the background. Can you see? That's again another subtle difference, but adds a whole lot of dimension to the scene. So if I just quickly turn off everything, that was without any of these lights that I used, and this is with all the lights turned on and using the gradient. Okay, so once again, a very simple illustration. If I turn off all the colors, you see it's in illustration, this is actually a very standard, basic couple of objects. It's not nothing complicated compared to some, of it, some other illustrations that I worked on. If I just show you one, where you really have uh, a lot going on. I mean, for presentations, you can have so much objects. This actually is around 11,000 objects. It doesn't look that complicated, but it's actually a lot of details there. Um, it was used for a presentation. Now, if I go back to uh, our main topics, which I mentioned, so once again, the four 
important things, pen, shapes, brushes, and appearance, I can start with the pen tool. And let me give you a very quick example of the pen tool. So I'm just going to open up this. And by the way, I just quickly show this to you. If you remember this example, uh, I have this file with me, so whoever needs it, I can give it to you. This is a great exercise to do if you never used the pen, pen tool before, to do these and continue them. So if you remember drawing these shapes on your own, then you are already good with the pen tool. You have a good foundation. But here's the trick that I was talking about. So the pen tool uh, is a tricky one. It's, it's something that's very not natural. It's not something that, like the pencil, if you use the pencil tool in Illustrator, you can draw with it quite easily. Let me just set this to a little bit more visible color like red. So when you draw with the pencil, that's quite natural, especially if you use a tablet like what I'm doing now. With this, you can draw almost like a, a pen, pencil on a paper. And more importantly, if you double click on the pencil, you can set it up with these options that I have here. So you keep selected the path that you are drawing and you also have the edit selected uh, selected paths turn on why that's useful is because if i start drawing something let me just show you this again so drawing with the pencil i can continue drawing that line and i can even draw over sections that i had before so you can see that that is quite natural the way we would expect to draw this is what we call automatic drawing tool because it automatically places down all these anchor points. When I highlight them like this, you can see all those little anchor points. They are created automatically with the pencil. And each anchor point, wherever there, cur there are curves, you will also get these little things called handles. When I drag this out, you can see that these two handles really control how that anchor point is going to uh, look like. Now, with the pen tool, you have to draw these anchor points manually. So it's not an automatic tool. You have to click, click, and that creates the anchor points. If you want to draw a curved line, you have to click and drag. And then the next line will automatically be curved as well. So you have to consider how this handle is working. If you don't want this to go uh, into another curved section like it would in my case, I can just simply click on that last anchor point and I can continue with a straight line again. So this is quite tricky, especially as I said, when it comes to drawing curves. But look at this. Instead of drawing curves, what you can do is draw straight lines. Okay? You might say that that's very far from what we need here. Okay? But I intentionally go to the points where this uh, little flame, it could be like a logo, it needs to turn. So I just go on these main uh, tips and turning points, and then comes the important shortcut. Hold down the Alt or Option key, and notice what happens when I do this. I just zoom a little bit closer so you can see it. When I hold down the Alt key and I hover over the path, that's when the cursor changes to this curvature uh, tool with which I can click and start dragging it out probably have to zoom back otherwise it doesn't do it properly so holding down the alt key I can drag it out into a curve and fit it perfectly where it needs to go and look at that how easy that is so instead of really struggling following that path I just put down those simple points in the beginning and I almost get everything in place I'll show you how to fix whatever it doesn't go into place but most of them will fall nicely into place just simply by using this simple old click and drag. And I think I'm better off using the tablet. The mouse is not behaving correctly here. If you have a point where your handles are not in place, you just hold down the command on Mac or control key. And with that, you can adjust the handles individually. So you can really align it again in place wherever it needs to go. Like here, I just align it like that and immediately we have a perfect shape. Now you can imagine even that big line, big curve I would be able to do with the same technique. But just to show you how effective this technique is, this is another quite difficult shape to draw. I will just draw one side of it. But look at this technique. I start here and hold down the shift key. That's the only one I haven't mentioned yet. Shift will draw a straight line. And then I hold down shift key again, click again there on the top. So we have three anchor points at the moment. Then I hold down the alt key. We can start here at the bottom. Start dragging that. 
And that already looks quite good, but if you hold down shift as well, it makes sure that this curve is also forced to keep the handles horizontal. See, when I don't hold down the shift, it works like that, but Alt and Shift or Option Shift together, I could do that. And then the same thing here, I can hold down Alt and Shift together, see how it changes. So Alt and Shift together, that is it. And then continuing from that point, I just click at the bottom and again, Alt and Shift together. And there you go, we have half of it. So if I would do that with the pen tool without using shortcuts, I would have quite a trouble doing it as nicely as this. And especially with such less amount of anchor points. Remember, I had one, two, three. That's it. Three points having all this shape created. So learning to work with the pen tool and these few shortcuts will help you. Um, and there's obviously lots of other methods, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. I just would like to mention also another thing which came out uh, with Creative Cloud version of Illustrator, which I found very useful. When you select an object, you can switch to the direct selection tool. The shortcut is A. When you do that, you will get these little corner widgets. These little circles show up around each corner point. And with them, you can click and drag to change the corners. So from sharp corners, you can turn into completely rounded corners. But more importantly, you can select individual points as well. I normally do a selection like that. And then you can change just that one individual corner point. And if you double click on the corner widget, that's also useful because then you get additional options where you can actually dial in the value you wish to use. Plus you even have inverted roundness and chamfer as well, which cuts it off. And when you use round options, you even have a different rounding option called relative and absolute. And the cool thing about this is these are always going to be available. These are live changes. So whenever I come back to this object, even if I add colors on it, let's just say I use a color or I could do changes to the stroke, whatever I do, these will always be there for me to make changes to. And remember, if you have the whole object selected, you change all the points. But if you select multiple points, only the ones you wish to change, then only those will change. See, if I select half of it, then I can change only half, but the other side stays. Okay, so that's about the pen tool in general and working with uh, parts. But now let's switch to the next topic. And obviously I will, um, I, I will be able to answer any questions at the end. So stay for the, till the end and I will answer any of your questions if you have one, any. So drawing symmetrical shapes is another tricky thing in Illustrator, but let me give you quick, two quick uh, techniques to do that. First of all, again, mastering the pen tool can be very useful. You might think that this heart shape needs quite a lot of anchor points to draw. I can do it in two anchor points, and I'm not trying to show off, I'm just trying to tell you that if you learn how to work with it, then you can do these things. So for example here, I would start by just setting up my handle points, holding down, click and dragging the first anchor point, hold down the Alt key, you can already set up that V-shape, then go just below the other anchor point, draw one side of your heart, and hold down the Alt key again, split the bottom handle, and then you click and drag on the top and look at that with two anchor points we drew the heart and this looks quite nice as well it's symmetrical because i took care of making these handles symmetrical but that's obviously something that you don't really have to learn to do because again this is all about using the pen tool but what if you are not that good at with the pen tool you can still draw things perfectly symmetrical you just have to do the following thing this is one method that i like uh, but i will show you another one as well which might be even more effective so i will just click at the bottom point hold down shift key this is crucial you have you want to make sure that line is straight and holding down the shift key make sure that it is now i'm just going to change the color again maybe to something very different for our stroke Maybe a bright blue will do. And I will also make sure using the appearance panel so we can see what I'm doing. So there's my line. And then now I do it slightly differently. I will continue this line here. And then I will just click and drag. Actually, let's just hold and click and drag out the handle like that and come to the other side. That looks already better. 
like that. And then we can finish off and click and drag and then just adjust, holding down the command key, I just adjust it slightly. Let's say that's the heart shape that we wanted. Pressing Shift X can swap quickly the stroke and fill color on a selected object. So I started off using for the stroke, now becomes the fill. And once you have one side and you made sure that the center point is completely vertical, that's when you use the Reflect tool, which is O, the shortcut. You click in a center point, you can click anywhere on the symmetry line, and then you click and drag and hold down Alt and Shift or Option Shift. And that's going to keep it completely uh, symmetrical and duplicate. Alt is to duplicate, Shift is to keep it symmetrical. Yeah, my heart is not as nice as what I did in the beginning with just two anchor points. But once you have two halves, it's still not joined together. So what you want to do at this point, having the two selected, you use the shape builder. People who use this illustrator for a long time probably would use Pathfinder, which is great as well. But shape builder is even faster. That's a tool here in the toolbar. You select both sides and just draw over the two and then it becomes one shape. At the moment, it doesn't want to become one shape. Maybe it's because I just moved them around too much here. There you go, now it's one shape. All right, now uh, another technique would be if you want to see automatically while you are drawing the other side. So it's like a simultaneous symmetrical drawing. This is slightly more tricky. Here what you need to do first of all is to draw a straight line again. You can even use the uh, line tool for this. You just draw a straight line, and once that line is placed down, you put it in a group. That's when you need the layers to see, make sure that what you are doing is going to set up correctly. So Command-G or Control-G is going to make a group from that line. Notice I don't even have any colors on that line. It doesn't need any colors. You will see why. Once it's in the group, that's all we needed. And then you set up an effect. Uh, Illustrator has all these effects they, and they can be applied as live effects, which is amazing. Again, makes it possible to make changes to them so they are non-destructive. So I go through the effect menu and I go under Distort and Transform and I choose Transform. Transform is a very powerful effect. If you learn one effect in Illustrator, this should be the one. Because with this you can do so many different things. What I will do here is I want to reflect the X axis, so I want to reflect that way, and I would like to make a copy, so not just simply reflect what I'm drawing, but I want to copy it already, and then I can decide whether I want to draw on the left side or on the right side of my symmetry. I will draw on the left side, so I set up my reference point to be on the right side. That makes the center of symmetry this empty line that we created. That's all you needed to set up, so ref reflect X, copy one and set that point up there. That's all you need. Once you click OK, this effect is set up on this group. Look at this, the appearance panel tells me that the effect is here. And if I click on this, I can always make changes to it. And if I come up here, you can also see that whenever you apply an effect to an object, Illustrator will fill in the circle, meaning that it has something more than just a simple stroke and fill. So the appearance, Remember, don't forget the appearance is a very important thing that we use. So once you have that ready, you go into uh, the group itself and you start drawing. So I'm going to use the pen tool now. And what I will do is I will set it up just so we can see it into a stronger color, something like that. And I will start drawing from the bottom and holding down shift, I can draw straight lines just like that. Now, when I go in here, I can see already that I made a mistake because I didn't lock that, that line there. That's also something that you should do before you do anything else. You lock that one single line that doesn't have any color at the moment, okay? So locking it, make sure that you don't actually continue drawing that. Instead, you are drawing a separate line. And what's important is, and that's the last step, you see, I started drawing, but it's not I don't see a reflection of it on the other side. The reason for that, because this path that I'm using has to be placed within the group. So if I drag this here, within the group, and I zoom back, see, it's already there. So that's all I needed to do. And now if I continue drawing, so whatever I do here, I'm just going to continue using the pen tool. Whenever I place down a new section, I see it immediately on the other side. 
and I can come up here in the center point, and there you go, we have the symmetrical shape. Just, just to show you this in action, if I keep drawing the same line, you can see that it's all happening simultaneously. And that's a very effective thing. Again, if you are drawing anything that needs to be symmetrical, I'm talking about Batman logo, for example, anchors, all kinds of things which can be extremely useful. And the good thing is, once you have a group set up like that, you only have to put your line into that group. So this group, you do it once. Once it's set up with the effect and with everything the way I've done it, so just to show you if I delete this whole path, as long as I draw a new thing and it's placed into that group, I can draw straight away in symmetry. Okay, so that's another effective thing. Again, still using pen tool, of course, but this, this is something to do with symmetry, which is very important in illustration. Now, shape builder I already mentioned, and here's a good example why to use the shape builder. Once again, everything can be created from simple geometric shapes. And if you don't believe me now, you will, be, you will believe me at the end of this session. But for example, here's a simple speech bubble. To draw a speech bubble, you might find it difficult. But if you just use three circles, select all three, and using the shape builder, you join together the parts you wish to keep, just simply drawing over them, and then hold down the Alt or Option key and draw over the parts you don't need, you immediately have your speech bubble. That's how simple it is. I can do the Vodafone logo just as easily. If I select these one, two, three, four circles, I can create exactly what you see on the other side. So I just hold down Alt, remove what we don't need, the excess, and then just simply draw over the remaining parts. And there you go, we have the Vodafone logo. And the same way, Batman of course, and also you can do the Twitter logo, look at that. Have you ever thought of that was actually created from purely circles? And that's a very common thing designers do. And the reason why circles are so effective is because they are the purest shape ever. Okay, they, they are like the most ideal shape in aesthetics, a, a, a perfect circle. And if your actual illustration is made of only of perfect circles, it's going to look very, I would say, balanced, harmonious. It just really works. Okay, so you can see, I, I'm not going to do that. It would take a little bit longer to like uh, do it with the shape builder, but there's all the circles that was used for the Twitter, log Twitter logo, and there's so many others. The Apple logo is also only using circles, perfect circles. If you look into it, you can find the actual original sketch, uh, which was made of only circles. So working with shapes is, exp uh, is very important, but here's another example, one of uh, my favorite things to uh, just ex ex like practice on is doing these Celtic crosses. They are almost like riddles for designers or illustrators how to do them. Now I show you very quickly how I would do it and then uh, you can always watch the recording back if it was too fast. So what I'm doing here is again just using three shapes. So all to get this you need three shapes and not complicated shapes. You need these very simple shapes, a circle and two rounded rectangles. So let me just do just that. I'm going to start drawing from the center. I have these guides here for to, just to make sure that I draw them correctly. So holding down Alt and Shift together when you're drawing a circle, you can start from the center point and then draw it outside. And the same applies to the other tools like the rounded rectangle tool. You click in the middle. You just probably want to make sure that you deselect that shape that you already have, or maybe just remove the fill color and then you don't accidentally draw over it. So I'm just going to get rid of that so I can draw my other shape, starting again from the center point. Probably even easier if I just lock it. So starting from the center point, why is it not drawing? Hmm, that's strange. Let me try to draw on a separate layer. Okay, was just stuck. Okay, so if I start drawing, holding down Alt again, I can draw it. And by the way, with the, with the rounded rectangle, if you use up and down arrows, you can change how much roundness you want to use on them. These are completely rounded, but you can see holding the up and down arrows, I can change the roundness on them. I'm going to use a full uh, roundness here, and I'm going to just place this back. Holding down space, by the way, you can move shapes around while you are drawing them. Okay, so setting that up, 
I should have kept it in the middle. Let me just start again. So start from the middle, holding down the alt. I can draw a perfect shape like this. And then I will use the reflect tool, click and drag, holding down alt and shift together. I have a duplicate quickly. It's similar to the um, other technique that I showed you before. So now I have all the three shapes together and I'm going to turn off my guides. And look what I'm going to do. Instead, some, some people, I see this like um, a lot of illustrators are still falling in the same mistake. Whenever you have shapes similar to these, they would draw the circle on the perimeter and then they would draw the one inside. And also for these round, uh, rounded rectangles, they would draw two uh, for each. So they would draw one outside and one in the middle. Instead, what you can do is just use a bigger, thicker stroke Set it up to roughly the width that you need. And this is a stroke, so you can't really work with strokes as well as with field shapes. But if you go to object and choose expand, you can turn your strokes into fill. And then immediately you can work with them completely in a different way. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a fill color on this and maybe the stroke as well slightly differently. So you already see that that switch with the expand was ex especially important step. But now I can just use the Shape Builder tool, coming back to our good old Shape Builder that I use with the circles as well. And I know this because I've done this several times, but all you need to do is to learn how the knot is created and see what I'm doing here. All these different parts I'm joining together. So you can see the way it is up, up there. I'm going to join these lines as well together. Now I made a mistake. So you just simply, you don't hold any shortcuts. You just go over these lines one by one, and then you do these lines as well. So just going over those, and there you go. There's the Celtic cross. And now comes the other tool which I love to work with, and that is the uh, Life Paint Bucket tool. It looks like a bit uh, like a strange tool to work with in the beginning, but it's actually extremely useful because with this, although these objects are not really separated well, I could still click on the parts which I, I wish to change in colors and I could very quickly amend them and immediately it stands out a bit more. Now let's just put another color in here and you're probably thinking about the choice of colors that I use here. It's horrible, horrendous. But what we can do is once you have your colors in place, you select all this, and there's another one of my favorite ones, is the Life Paint, sorry, Recolor Artwork. Once you click on that, you get a list of all the colors being used in that illustration, even the black outline, which by default stays black, but if you want to change the color on that, you have to click on that little dash, turns into an arrow, and then you click on here and you say yes. And then even that color can be changed. But instead of changing it here, I go into edit here on the top, and then I get a color wheel. I love color wheels. Again, perfect shape, circle. And then I'm going to start changing them around one by one, see how quickly I can set them up. And if I want, I can even rely on harmony, uh, color harmony techniques. I could choose maybe analog colors if I want to create something like that. Or I can choose um, triad, which is quite similar to my horrible colors in the beginning. Or I could use complementary colors. And once you choose a harmony, you can move them around all together at the same time. And that, that's quite nice. But you can also change back to no uh, color harmony at all by unlocking the colors first. And then you can again change them individually. But also, if you come up with a color uh, setup, let's just say I will do a bit more closer colors in this time. If you'd like a combination of colors and you would like to keep that, but changing them all around the wheel, that's when you lock the colors together. And once they are locked, they can be moved around the wheel uh, together. So let me just do that now. You see how quickly and easily I can change all the colors at the same time. So this is another great thing. If you are not confident with choosing colors, use the recolor artwork option. Okay, so that can teach you a lot about colors. And if you want to save a color setting, that's another favorite of mine. You click on this option here, new color group, save the settings, and then you can come up with another setting. Let's say this one. Okay, I can just click on yes. So. Okay, if I need to change back to that, I just come back here and I can always use the one that I saved. I unfortunately, uh, 
um, I amended the one that I wanted to save, but you can see the point that as long as you save each of the settings that you like, here, new color group, I can always switch back and forth between them very easily. Okay, now let's not waste more time on shapes. So that was our second category. Appearance is essentially uh, styles being saved. So if I select this one, let's say, and I apply the graphic style, that's actually a combination of fills and strokes. So you get this panel called graphic styles by default, and you can find lots of different settings here that you can open up and you can try them out. Like let's say artistic effects, if I open that up, you can say, see we have all these different styles. Now these are all using combinations of the uh, fill colors and strokes. So whenever you use one of these, you will see the combination here in the appearance panel. And that's why learning to work with the appearance panel is so important because you can save any appearance and apply it easily by just using the same again from the graphic styles panel. And that's how professional illustrators work. They have their set of different appearances and they apply them. And just to show you another quick example here, look how quickly and effectively I can draw uh, roads. If I just use the pencil tool here and I have my layer selected, start drawing. Obviously, it would be quite long to set this up to make it work. So I save the appearance that we need. And there you go, there's the road. And I can even keep continue drawing that. Remember the pencil uh, can change direction and, and go over and am amend parts as well. You can even hold down the Alt key and smooth out sections while you are drawing. And this appearance is quite complex. It has around six strokes, as you can see, set up in a specific order. And that's how this is working. Okay, so working with appearance can make illustration much easier as long as you experience uh, or learn how to uh, work with the appearance panel. So last but not least, I have another like roughly 10 minutes and I'm going to attempt a full illustration. I don't think I will be able to get to the end, but uh, I wanted to prove to you that drawing with circles can be very effective. If, if you look at this illustration, uh, you probably go, oh, so cute. But this is actually all round shapes, all perfect circles. I didn't use anything else, just the circle tool. And obviously, combine it with gradients and shape builder and the other things I showed you today, but actually nothing new. Whatever I've done today is exactly the same thing I would do here. So let me just try to uh, quickly mock up the head. Obviously, it would take quite long to do the whole thing, but if I start with a brand new illustration, once again, let's see how I would do this. I would start with the circle, which is going to be the head, okay? Then I select the direct selection tool, select these two points, the left and the right points, and with that, using the arrows on the keyboard, I can shift it around slightly. So we can already get a slightly different shape here. And then I can also select these handle points and I can round them out a bit more. So I started with a circle and you can say I'm cheating, but I'm, I'm making changes to the circle because I needed a slightly different shape. But then if we look at, uh, look at the example we had here, we need to have also the eyes and the ears. Now the ears are quite simple. They are almost perfect circles. So I can just draw a circle up there and then I can draw another one as well quickly on top of it. Before I go any further at this point, I would already set up the colors just so we can see what is going on here. I'm going to use a gradient on the fill color. So I will use the gradient panel all right, and while this fill color is selected, I click on that and I change it to radial gradient. And I'm going to go a little bit fast so you might find it difficult to follow. Again, it's doing quite strange things, Illustrator today. I don't know what is it doing again here. It's supposed to be a perfect circle in the middle. Let me just try to, okay, it actually has two gradients. How could it be? Uh -huh. All right. I don't know how that happened. But yeah, so there's our gradient. I'm going to change the color to a brighter gray, something like that. And then we can play around with the center point, maybe increase it out, something like that. See what I told you about lighting? This almost looks like 3D immediately, just by applying gradient, shadows around it, and highlight in the middle. 
I select these two shapes and move it behind the, the head and I'm going to use the same gradient for the ear but I'm going to go into it and change it to a darker gradient so I will turn this one and that color also to a darker gradient something like this then I can select this other shape and using the eyedropper I can pick the same color already and there's the one of the ears already we can distort this slightly if we want do something with it and then using the reflect tool we can already reflect this onto the other side the shortcut was alt shift to make sure it duplicates and keeps it uh, straight let's draw quickly the patch behind the eye again it can be the same shape but now again i use the direct selection tool and i shift these points around slightly and you can even switch to the pencil tool and look at that with the pencil tool i can draw over the edges slightly and I could create a much more uh, customized shape for the eye. Then I will draw the other circle on top of that, which is going to be the rim. So I'll just come back here. You can see we need that one there. And then we need to have another circle. Another useful shortcut, Command C, Command F, for Control C, Command, uh, Control F, is going to resize or copy and paste exactly in the same position. I use the eyedropper to pick the same color from the head and then I can use again the same technique and create the iris. So for the iris I'm going to again change my gradient and I'm going to use from the outside a little bit darker blue. So I'm just going to switch to colors and the darker blue and inside I will make it brighter blue like that and let's make it a little bit cross-eyed let's always make things more cute so if we have it like that and then we add the pupil and I'm going to use again the same color or maybe for that we can use completely black like that and this won't be really realistic without a reflection you always have to have a highlight um, a, a point of uh, the brightest detail where light gets reflected so I'm going to add that in there all right that immediately makes it a little bit more lively and then what I will do now is I select everything in the background group them together and I lock them command 2 is the shortcut for locking meaning I can't select anything in the background now so I select everything that's made up the eye group it together and again use the, the uh, center point here alt shift and drag it onto the other side now at this point if you feel like it's too close you can always select the eye and use the arrows on the keyboard to move it around let's say move it three points to the left three points to the right so we are getting there now we need the nose the nose is slightly more tricky but again i'm using staying true to what i said i'm using the circle all right then i'm going to pick that same color up there then I use the direct selection tool and just move it down slightly. There you go. Another shape created from that. Then comes the uh, mouth. So I'm going to draw another circle. Duplicate this. And holding down the old key, you can quickly duplicate. And then using the shape builder, holding down the old key or option key, you draw over the parts you don't need and you immediately have the shape that we wanted to create here. We can move this behind the nose, something like that, and then we just need to reflect it again. So using the uh, same method that we did before, Alt, Shift, Reflect, and we have the mouth as well in place. And then after this, it's really all about just continuing the same methods and every detail here, even that little detail on the top, using the same method, just to show you very quickly, I can draw a circle once again, use the same color from here, Alt, click and drag, and then select these two, Alt, draw over, and we have one of those little uh, uh, fur piece that can go up. We can also delete using the eraser tool you can delete the parts that you don't need very quickly so there's one old click and then rotate to duplicate rotate again and so on and so forth so I think my point is proven with this that anything can be created from simple shapes so the the whole thing that I'm trying to explain here is that you don't actually have to have a um, freehand drawing skill in Illustrator it's great to have it but if you have a reference image, you probably most likely will be able to recreate it by using shapes. 
or combinations of the tools that I showed you today. So that's really uh, what I wanted to get to at the, at the end. And just to show you an example, when you have a uh, sketch that you have on paper, of course that can always help. And if you are good at hand drawing, then this is what I would recommend you to do, to get your drawing, place it into Illustrator, and then you can go over it by tracing it. What you need to do is once you place the image in, you double click on the layer and you turn on this uh, option called template. Template will dim the image automatically and on a separate layer on top of it you can start drawing. And once again here, just to show you, for example drawing the, the arm, it would be so easy as long as you use the right tool, like the pen tool in this case. And then I can just increase the stroke size, so once that's selected, I can increase the stroke size. And here's another useful tool to learn. There's a tool called Width Tool, with which you can vary the size of the stroke. So you can add again a little bit more dynamism instead of just having a straight line. You can create width points on this and immediately you get a little bit more interesting shape, right? So obviously the whole thing here would be, I would be able to draw with the same techniques. But one last thing that I also find um, useful when I draw, again, I could use a simple shape like the rectangle, okay? I can use these little points here in the corner points to create the curves the way I need it. So instead of drawing around it, I could always start from a simple shape and see how quickly I can adjust everything into the right size that I need without actually having to draw this with the pen tool. But this is the useful uh, technique. If I uh, have a shape and on top of that I need to have another shape which is closed inside it, what you can do is to use this method called draw inside. If you click to that, it will force Illustrator Illustrator to draw inside the shape you currently have selected. So if I now use any tools with another color and I draw, for example, a circle, that circle will automatically be kept inside that previous shape until you go back to draw normally. So that is, again, extremely useful. For example, if you have like a ball shape, and I'm just going to use the same color from there, uh, or maybe... Let me just select this again. It's acting up again. Okay, you can imagine that drawing with the same technique, you can create so many easy techniques when you need to overlap shapes together. So um, I just switch back to this, remembering that the main tools that I talked about today were these four, but obviously it's a combination of these, and also it's get to know these tools and the shortcuts that comes with them. So um, that was really my best I could do in this short amount of time. I could spend the whole day obviously showing you techniques. I hope you found it useful and uh, I'm glad you joined me today. Thank you. Thank you.